Hi, this is Amber from the A-Team. Today we're going to be talking about Reflector 2, which is the software that lives on your teacher desktop that's connected to a projector, and it allows Chromebooks and iPads to connect to your projection screen so that you can see what's on the other device. This allows you to be able to connect to your teacher desktop from your teacher Chromebook and be able to walk around the room to show what you're seeing on your Chromebook to students. It also allows students who are on HCPS devices to connect and be able to display their work onto the projector as well. So we're going to talk about starting that software. So you're going to need to locate the Reflector 2 software. It's either going to be um, in your launcher if you're on Windows 7. If you're on Windows 10, there will be a folder on your desktop that's called the launcher that has icons in it. Or you can go to your list of all programs and find Reflector 2. Double click on Reflector 2 and what you will notice is that it will open on your desktop and begin running in the system tray on the bottom right hand corner. At the top of the window, you should see the name of your computer. This is very important because as you're choosing the device to mirror to, you'll have to choose the correct computer in case there's someone that's accidentally mirroring to the computer next door. So when I'm on my Chromebook, I'm going to be looking for MRA 18 PC1 in this case so that I can connect to this computer in order to display my screen. As your device connects to Reflector, you'll notice here this is a casting device that is reflecting to my computer desktop. Um, this is just one device. If another device connects, then it will show up next to it. So now you'll see that I have an iPad device and a Chromebook connected at the same time. As long as you have Reflector running, you can have multiple devices connected to your desktop. Um, these can be dragged around. So if I wanted to make them smaller, if I wanted to move them around, you can um, move these around. The last one that's connected is the one that's going to end up on the top, um, but you do have the ability to, um, to move them around. So um, notice you've got some options if you right click that you can change the skin. If it's an iPad and you wanted to show it exactly like the one that you have and maybe yours is white, you can actually um, change the skin on it. Um, you can also choose to um, do automatic orientation. So if the person using it turns it sideways, um, it will automatically turn sideways. You can choose to turn that off if you like. Um, there's different options. You can also choose to display full screen. So if this is the one that we need to look at right now, I can choose display full screen. The good thing is I can move these around and um, show different ones and move them so that if there's one that I want to show larger, I can actually control the size of the window and move it around so that um, those particular ones um, are showing the way that I want them to show on my screen. So that's nice. As, as many as you can fit on your screen, you can show them, um, but you can also choose to um, uh, disconnect from certain ones. So if I wanted to close the connection with this iPad, I simply would click, right click and click close connection. The other option is I have my reflector um, screen down here that I can open back up and if it's minimized just click on the reflector icon and you'll see kind of my dashboard here and you can see that um, it's pulling the the iPad name but for the Chromebook it's just calling it a cast device this icon that's next to the name is one that I can choose if I wanted to boot that particular device off and notice when I did that it booted it off um, so that that particular device is disconnected. So it's good to do that, to know how to do that. So um, if there's one that you just need to get to get rid of because you're finished with it. Um, and again, you can control the size of that as well. 
Um, there's also the, the eye on the left hand side. So if you didn't want to boot the person off, but you temporarily wanted to hide it, you can actually use the eyeball. And that's really helpful so that if you wanted to just focus on one of the connected devices at a time, you can just turn them on and off by um, using the eye. Also, you can record different um, devices. So if I wanted to record this particular Chromebook device, I can go up and hit the record button. And then what it starts doing is it's actually recording what's happening so that as this Chromebook is um, moving and doing different things, it's actually recording. So if I had a student that's um, showing how to solve a problem and I wanted to record them showing what they were doing. So if they were, you know, drawing on their screen or, or doing other things on their screen, it would actually be capturing that. When I'm finished recording, I would simply click stop and that's going to um, give me the ability to save this file to my computer and notice it's saving it as an mp4. So, you know, I could say this is Amber's Chromebook. Um, and click save and it's going to save that file um, onto your computer so that you could use that for different things. Um, you can record each of the devices separately so now if I wanted to record what's happening on this device as soon as they're finished I can click stop and it gives me the ability to um, save another recording and again these are going to take up space on your computer but it's a really good way to do some recording of um, student samples if you wanted to briefly record what their screen is doing. It's also a great way to do tutorials so if you wanted to show students how to do something on the Chromebook this is another way that you could do that as well. Um, I'm going to call this reflector recording iPad and notice it's saving it as an mp4 file. So just to kind of show you um, what this does, I'm going to open up this file that we just did, um, our reflecting recording of the iPad. I'm going to open up that um, video file so that you can see what happened and it's actually recording. It's a recording of what happened on that screen. So it shows all the different things that happen. So this is a great way. And notice it only recorded that one screen and not the whole desktop. Um, so that's a great way to do recordings if you need um, to be able to do those. So again, that's using the reflector tools, um, using the record buttons on the top of the screen. But you also have the ability to do different things here. There's also broadcasting. And broadcasting allows you to stream from your screen directly to YouTube so that you can create an event on your YouTube channel if you wanted to stream from that um, you can do that as well. I'm going to not do that right now um, but you have that ability to broadcast. You also have um, some settings and I want to open those settings and go to preferences because I want to show you some of the things that you can choose to have set up on your desktop. Um, first of all um, under connection this is how you can change the resolution to how it connects. You can um, add some security if you want to. You can ask for a password and if you want to make it so that the student has to put in a password in order to connect, that might help with those rogue students who are wanting to just connect to your desktop in the middle of your uh, presenting. So you can put a password on, on your um, reflector and you can come back and change it every day if you wanted to. Um, you also, instead of having it immediately connect, you can also do, instead of a password, you could say prompt to approve. And I'll show you what this means. So I'm going to go ahead and um, boot off this iPad and show you what happens. And let's say this student that has the iPad is now wanting to connect to my device. It's going to show um, a window that says the following device is trying to connect. Is this okay? So I'm going to allow and now that device is connected. So you can choose to um, allow different devices and let that um, prompt come up first if you don't want to choose to have a password there. 
So I'm going to go back to preferences for just a minute and um, go over this. We do not have Class Hub. That's a paid service. Um, and director and student are also services that are paid for. What you have the ability to do is display um, iOS devices and Chrome devices to your desktop through using Reflector and you have the ability to do some recording as well. So we hope this has um, been good for you so that you could see how Reflector works. It's definitely a fantastic tool to be able to be mobile in your classroom with your Chromebook as well as having students have the ability to reflect from their um, Chrome devices and their iOS devices that are Henderson County owned to your desktop in order to display work to the rest of the class. Hi, this is Amber from the A-Team. We're going to talk about reflecting from your Chromebook onto your teacher desktop using Reflector 2. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is locate in your um, Chrome browser the display to the another screen option or you can also click on your picture in the bottom right hand corner and go to cast devices available then you're going to find the computer name that matches the name that's on your reflector box that's in the bottom right hand corner. That's going to be important so that you'll know you're reflecting to the correct computer. So I'm going to choose to cast my screen to the computer that's on um, my desktop. So I'm going to choose to um, connect my entire screen. However, if you approach it from the casting at the top, of your browser, you can actually choose to cast a particular tab. If you're wanting to cast only one tab from your browser window, you can use the Google Cast icon at the top of your browser. After you click to open that, you'll notice there's a drop down here where you can choose to cast your tab or cast your entire desktop. If you want them to be able to see all sorts of things you're going to be going back and forth between, you'll want to choose cast desktop. If you're only wanting to sh them to sh see one particular tab and nothing else, um, click cast tab. That's only a temporary thing um, because Think about if you're switching between tabs, if you wanted to show them something on a website and then show them something on a Google Doc, doing cast tab is not a good idea because it's literally only going to get to cast that particular tab. So I'm going to choose to go ahead and cast desktop. Then I'm going to choose the computer name that matches the name in Reflector. And then it will begin to cast as soon as I've said share because you have to give it permission. And once it's casting, um, you'll notice that the cast icon kind of turned blue. You can also go down to your picture again and choose to stop casting. Um, also, it's important to note that as you're casting, any sound that's coming from your computer will also go to the desktop computer. So you don't even have to connect for sound. So if I were playing a video from this desktop right now, or this Chromebook right now, it would actually play on the desktop as long as I'm actively mirroring. To stop casting, you'll click on your picture in the bottom right hand corner, and you'll click stop. And this will stop casting to your desktop. 